Hi there. In this video, we're going to discuss the advanced variation of French defense, which uh, appears after moves e4, e6, d4, d5, and white's e5 move. Uh, so what can be more logical than just to grab some space and fix the pawn structure as it is, because it is kind of pretty hard for light square bishop now to get some active squares here. So, uh, as we have discussed in the introductory video, uh, here we enter the pattern with pawn chains and no surprises that black tries to undermine the basis of the pawn chain immediately here with the c7, c5 move. So, uh, white's normal reply here is c2 to c3, but let's have a look at what happens if white decides to capture the pawn on c5. So, after that, uh, black can recapture on c5 and focus on the pawn e5, which now became quite vulnerable. Uh, but I don't think that immediate capture on c5 is that great, because in that case, as we may notice, uh, the uh, bishop no longer protects g7 pawn, so white can basically play queen to g4 here, attacking it. And now black has not so uh, pleasant choice between uh, kind of protecting the pawn g7 with the king, which is not good, uh, going with the bishop back is also uh, not that great, and uh, even playing something like g6 will just, you know, weaken a lot of dark squares here on the king side, and this is definitely not what black wants in this position. Which means it's uh, better to um, delay the capture on c5 for one or several moves and just play some like knight to c6, attacking the pawn on e5. Because in this case, after the most natural reply protecting the pawn on e5, which is knight to f3, there is no longer queen g4 move, so black can simply capture on c5 with the bishop. And once again, as we have discussed in the introductory video, this pawn structure is beneficial for black, because we still have uh, uh, dark squid bishops on the board. There is no problem with the attack against e5, with the development in general, for example, after bishop to d3, um, black can even think of just undermining the pawn on e5 immediately, kind of solving the problem of uh, white's advantage in space. So after that, uh, if white tries to uh, set up the blockade on dark squares with the queen to e2 move, uh, black simply captures on e5, white captures on e5, uh, black captures on e5, there is a massive exchange on this square. And we can see that, yes, uh, at the moment white has sort of blockade, but it's going to change really soon after simple knight to f6 move. As we may notice, black already has some threats to f2 based on the position of the queen on e5. So, for example, bishop takes f2 is a direct threat with the uh, fork on g4 uh, after white recaptures with the king. And even if that doesn't work, black is uh, about to castle and then attack the queen and just uh, push uh, his central pawns. So why can try interesting bishop b5 check here? So that's the only uh, trick actually, uh, because if black plays something really uh, natural like bishop to d7, we can see that this bishop is pinned now and white can capture an e6. Just simple tactics. So instead of playing something like bishop d7, black can simply play king to f7. Uh, so here you may ask uh, what's going on, so the king is bad here. Well, it's not true. In fact, it's just a question of two moves to bring it to normal position. Uh, it means that black may play rook f8 and then king g8, and that's it. So it's a manual castling, uh, but there is no problem with it because uh, white's development at the moment is also not very impressive, which means black has time. And as I said, after that, the queen will be attacked, and then black's pawns in the center will become uh, very good, aggressive, and annoying for white. So, uh, that's why uh, taking on c5 is not a good idea for white, so let's focus on uh, the main line, which is uh, c3. So, after white protects the pawn on d4, uh, black should think of the further attack, because that's the plan, and obviously uh, there is a possibility to attack it with the help of queen b6 or knight to c6 move, uh, or both, and the order of moves is uh, actually the question of taste, in my opinion. So, uh, in many cases, it may lead to the same position, uh, but queen b6 is slightly more flexible because, uh, in this case, uh, black may consider uh, some interesting 
lines based on bishop d7 and then quick bishop b5 actually getting rid of uh, the least active piece, the light square bishop, which is a problem in French defense. So you may consider probably start with the queen b6 and then decide what you want to do. Either this bishop d7, bishop b5 or just a classic attack against d4. So after queen b6, uh, there is no direct threat to d4, but white has to keep on developing pieces. So knight usually goes to f3. Uh, in this video, we're going to focus on knight to c6 move. And after this move, uh, white has a choice. But first of all, let's try to understand what's the problem. So white should also develop the pieces somehow. Uh, the most logical thing is to develop the light script bishop uh, because white wants to castle as soon as possible. And it's not clear where to put this bishop uh, because literally every option has some drawbacks. So let's start with the bishop e2 move. First of all, it's just not an active position for the bishop. So 100% uh, white will have to uh, change this position later, which means white is just losing the time. Uh, but uh, it's not the only problem with this move. So now black can continue with the attack against d4. For example, c takes d4, white recaptures with a pawn. And now it's time to bring up the reserves, right? Because d4 is protected for now, we need another piece to attack it. And usually it is this knight. So now goes to e7 with the simple idea of going to f5 and attacking d4. Uh, the third time. So uh, now we can see the problem with the bishop e2. Just imagine that bishop on d3, it would control f5 square, but from e2 it doesn't. Uh, so after white's knight to c3 move, black's knight to f5, pawn on d4 is already hanging. Uh, so white can play knight to a4, attacking the queen, one of the uh, pieces that attack d4. Uh, but it doesn't really help because black continues with the queen a5 check. White responds with the bishop d2, what can be more natural. And now black plays bishop to b4 move. So pay attention that uh, white has several problems now. The knight on a4 is kind of vulnerable, pawn on d4 is hanging, uh, there is a bishop d2 threat where after white has to recapture with the knight because knight on a4 needs a queen on d1 to be protected. So uh, white's normal reply here is probably bishop to c3 where the bishop is protected, but now the knight doesn't have uh, lots of squares, so black can continue with the b5 move. And white has the only way to uh, actually avoid serious trouble here. It is a3 move, counter-attacking the bishop. Uh, where after black simply captures on c3, white is forced to take with the knight. Then uh, black immediately attacks with the b4 move. And after a takes b4 and queen takes b4, we can see that black has really active setup. Pay attention that the situation on the queen side has changed, so position is no longer that closed. This bishop no longer feels that bad because now there are some perspectives to uh, bring it to more active position or to exchange it. Uh, but first white has to solve the problem of uh, two handing pawns. Uh, after something like bishop b5, black has simple bishop d7 and everything is just fine. That is probably the ideal situation for black in uh, French defense. So perfect development, clear objects of attack and uh, feels like black grabbed the initiative here. That's why bishop e2 is not that great. Let's have a look at other options of uh, the development of the light squared bishop. In this position, uh, it uh, appears that white can develop the bishop to d3 square. At very first glance, it hands the pawn on d4, but in fact, it's not handing, uh, at least right now. So if black captures on d4, and after cd4 captures the second time, so like this, then black is losing, uh, not because of queen a4 check, because knight can step back, but because of simple capture on d4 and after queen takes d4, queen is just vulnerable on this square and the king is vulnerable as well, so white has this simple uh, discovered attack, simple check, and then next move, white captures the queen. So uh, this is not good for black, obviously, so taking on d4 the second time is definitely a bad idea. Uh, but cd4 itself is a good thing because uh, not only does black uh, make the pawn d4 an object of attack, but also has uh, the access to uh, b4 square now. Why it's important, we'll see just in a second. So to avoid this check on diagonal a4, e8, black can play typical bishop d7, a developing move, uh, maybe not making the bishop for uh, uh, more active, but at least preparing the development of the rook, let's say. Uh, there is no longer check, so d4 is really hanging. 
and uh, White should decide now what to do with that pawn. Typical problem for this pawn is that it cannot be easily protected by the dark squared bishop because uh, of the queen on b6 attacking not only d4 but b2 as well. So whenever bishop moves, black can take on b2. That's the thing. So if white uh, opts for bishop c2, let's say, so looks like a natural move to protect the pawn on d4, then black has this knight to b4 move. That's exactly the problem with this line for white. I mean the bishop c2. Because now the bishop has no good squares. Um, black is happy to capture it and then this bishop will have no counterpart which means black will grab the control over light squares in the long run. For example, castling, because if white doesn't castle well, black has a bunch of other ideas. For example, moves like bishop b5 or queen to a6 come to mind, simply stopping white from castling. So it's a problem, so if white wants to keep the king safe, it's uh, the right moment to castle. In which case, black simply captures on c2. Uh, as I said, it's a beneficial exchange. Now black has a pair of bishops. Uh, position is not that open, but uh, nevertheless, I mean, whenever you have a bishop which has no counterpart and this bishop can be used in a later fight, I think it's a great advantage already. So rook to c8 looks very natural. Knight goes to c3, for example. Black just develops the knight to e7. Again, no problems with development here. The knight has two interesting squares to occupy to continue with the attack against uh, d4. White also can continue the development, but then that goes to f5, let's say, and I don't see why this position is good for white. Actually, black has no problems and uh, has no weaknesses at the moment. So, this means that uh, bishop to c2 is bad and uh, doesn't mean that bishop d3 is bad in general. Well, not really. White has an interesting uh, gambit-style continuation that we are going to discuss right now. So, in this position, instead of playing uh, anything protecting the d4, white can continue with castling, uh, leaving the pawn on d4 hanging. So, what happens if uh, black captures on d4? So, it's a real gambit. White is sacrificing the material here. There is no refutation of black's knight d4 in this position. And after knight captures d4, because look, if white plays something like bishop e3, uh, trying to pin the knight, it doesn't work because of simple knight takes f3 with check. Right, so it uh, makes no sense here. So knight d4 is the main option. And after queen captures on d4, white well, doesn't protect the pawn on e5 because, uh, you know, it takes time. The idea is to continue with the knight to c3. So what white is trying to do here is to uh, sacrifice some material to open the position and to try to punish black for a uh, vulnerable position of the king in the center. After knight c3, white has some ideas of knight b5, let's say, why can continue with the development uh, after bishop e3 again using the vulnerable position of the queen on d4 so different uh, moves are possible. First of all capturing the pawn on e5 is possible but dangerous because in that case the e-file becomes also open and after rook to e1 as we can see e6 is pinned so if queen goes anywhere like queen to b8 why can consider just capturing on d5 in this case and white is only a pawn down but black's position uh, looks a bit strange to me. Uh, there are different ideas including bishop f4, or bishop g5, simply some active stuff. It's, it's not clear how black is going to complete a development, but this line should be definitely analyzed uh, much deeper. I'm just showing you that it exists, but it doesn't mean that white is automatically winning or something. If black plays queen to d6 instead of it, so keeping the pawn d5 under uh, control, then white has uh, another option. It is knight to b5. So in this case, uh, White is trying to develop the piece quickly and try to use the vulnerability of the c7 square here. Uh, if black captures on b5, it's obviously bad because bishop takes and the king has to move. So that's about taking on e5. So it's uh, not so safe for black, I would say. Um, but um, if black doesn't do that, well, there is a problem because White uh, gets some initiative for uh, lower price. So after knight to c3, uh, uh, black may continue with the a6 move, just uh, preventing knight b5 or bishop d5 or whatever happened in that square. And white may continue with the queen e2. Um, it's not only the protection of the e5, but also the preparation of rook to d1 with further attack against the queen. Uh, black should rather develop the pieces now. Knight goes to e7. 
Uh, white can continue with rook d1, there are different moves, but the idea behind knight e7 is to attack e5, the next move, so king h1 also looks uh, pretty natural. And now after knight to c6 and f4, the pawn is protected and white is ready to continue the attack with the f5 we have discussed, it's one of the typical plans for this pawn structure. Uh, here it's not about, you know, attacking the bases, it's mainly about opening files against the king. Uh, for example, if black plays something like knight to b4, feels like a, a good active move, white can continue with the rook to d1, uh, not even spending time and moving the bishop away, and after this exchange, although it feels like it's a great achievement for black, but this position is no longer about some positional stuff like, you know, pair of bishops or something, it's about the development and concrete threats after something like queen b6, bishop to e3, and for example, bishop to c5. Everything looks okay for black, but after bishop c5 and queen to c5, white plays this. f5, uh, getting, in my opinion, enormous initiative. Of course, again, this position should be analyzed deeper uh, to make the final conclusion, but stuff like this uh, is pretty annoying for black usually. There is no dark squared bishop anymore, uh, white wants to attack the g7, the h7, there are different ideas, for example f6 at some point, whenever your castle short, maybe uh, just the end of your king, simply. Um, if you capture an f5 or something, there is of course d5 that may be captured with the rook or with the knight, I mean uh, both look pretty interesting, I would say that taking the rook with the temple, also avoiding some stuff with the bishop b5, uh, looks nice, then the other rook comes to play, and so on. So, position is pretty complicated here. So, this um, stuff obviously exists. Uh, I mean, the uh, gambit style, playing bishop d3, then sacrificing pawns, and so on, but you have to learn a lot there, uh, because usually if black plays this, then uh, black knows what to do. So, um, question of taste mainly, but uh, as I said, Playing something in the gambit style requires a lot of knowledge. There is another option for white, which I think is universal and uh, you can avoid, you know, learning so much, for example, if you play it as white. And it is considered the main line, so it's also very important for black to know what to do there. Let's have a look at the a3 continuation. So exactly in this position, uh, white plays a3 move. Uh, at first glance, it looks very strange, but this move has uh, several ideas behind. Uh, the first one is to control b4 square. Uh, the second one is to be able to play before uh, the next move. So why it is important? Because in that case, black uh, will have less space on the queen side, first of all. Uh, white will have more space on the queen side and will have some additional options of uh, playing not only on the king side, but on the queen side. We'll have a look at this in the moment. Um, another idea is that whenever white plays before, let's say, there is no longer a problem with the hanging pawn on b2. So basically it also set, solves the problem of uh, the dark squared bishop. So after b4 move, the bishop will be free to go anywhere, including some moves protecting d4. So it's a multi-purpose uh, move uh, and black has a choice here. So uh, there are three options. So to uh, control b4 additionally preventing it, uh, to play uh, some like c4, stopping white from playing b4, because in that case it's possible to capture en passo. And uh, there is also an option just to ignore it and uh, to focus on uh, the attack against uh, d4 move. So uh, let's start with uh, just the ignoring and uh, let's enter the line uh, which allows black to attack d4. There are two options, the knight can go to e7 or sometimes to h6. Uh, in my opinion, it makes no difference because uh, the knight anyway gets to f5 um, as near as the next move. So uh, let's have a look at knight e7, which looks a bit uh, more natural here. But again, it's a question of taste. Knight h6 also works. Um, so in this case, uh, white, of course, plays b4. And um, after um, capturing on either b4 or d4. Again, question of taste leads to the same position. Uh, black continues with the knight to f5, attacking the pawn on d4. So here white has two uh, ways to protect the pawn on d4. Now bishop is free, uh, so uh, bishop can go to e3 or b2. Uh, bishop b2 is considered the main line. Also, um, bishop e3 
has some logic behind. So on b2, the bishop feels very, very uh, passive, right? Uh, on e3, it's also not necessarily that active, but in this case, uh, if black doesn't capture the bishop uh, in the nearest future, there is a chance to improve it. Uh, so uh, in my childhood, that was my main choice. I played bishop e3 as white. Uh, but the thing is, if black plays correctly and eventually captures the bishop, white doesn't have a lot uh, in that position. So let's focus on the bishop b2, which is a bit more uh, interesting. So after uh, bishop goes to uh, b2, uh, black continues with the bishop to d7, which is a normal development here. Uh, the point is, c file is open now, so black wants to bring the rook to c8. Um, so what white is going to do in this position is to use the c5 square, which now became, be, became an interesting outpost for the knight. Uh, but for now, as you can see, uh, it's not so simple. So first, um, white has to decide what to do with the pawn on d4. And uh, one of the possibilities here is just to play aggressive g4. By the way, typical stop here. So after this move, the knight is forced back. Uh, to a passive position and knight goes to c3 now because d4 is protected and the idea behind it is to bring the knight through a4 to c5. Um, so in this case uh, black can use the fact that bishop is hanging here and they play knight to a5. This is interesting thing. Uh, simultaneously with uh, controlling a4 square with the bishop uh, black wants to bring the knight to c4 which is weakened after uh, white's b4 move. Uh, let's have a look at queen c2 and what happens after uh, black's knight to c4 because now the bishop is protected, knight is hanging, so uh, going back looks stupid. So knight to c4 should be played. And after bishop takes c4 and d takes c4, just give black one more move. I would say something like, uh, you know, bishop c6 may happen and I would definitely take black here. Uh, because white's position looks like a mess with so many light squared weaknesses, but it's white to move here and white has a tempo and after knight to d2 the things are not so clear. So pawn on c4 is always hanging, it's a problem. As you can see because of the queen on b6 black cannot immediately protect it with the b5, which means white has uh, some time uh, to complete a development to bring uh, other pieces to super active positions, for example, knight can go through e4 to either c5 or maybe even d6 at some point. Uh, well, until d5 is not uh, occupied, white may also consider some like d5, even sacrificing the material but opening the position and bringing other pieces to play. So this position is very interesting, um, so we can try to analyze it deeper. So it's basically about um, ignoring the stuff with the help of uh, knight to e7 and knight f5 or knight h6 and knight f5 maneuver. Let's have a look what happens if black plays bishop d7 move, also ignoring white's b4 idea. So in this position black plays bishop to d7. Uh, the same stuff, black is ignoring uh, b4 but uh, tries to develop uh, the pieces of the queen side as fast as possible. So let's say b4 takes on d4 and uh, black continues with the rook to c8. Uh, so in this position, after bishop b2, protecting the pawn in advance and preparing knight to c3, black may try the same stuff. So knight to a5, using the fact that pawn is pinned and bishop is heading on b2. But this time, as we may notice, the rook controls c4 square, as well as the knight and the pawn. So knight to c4 becomes a real positional threat. Uh, white may want to protect that square additional with knight to d2. And uh, after knight to c4, simply capture the knight, this time with the knight, not um, sacrificing the bishop for the purpose of, you know, weakening the pawn on c4 and proceeding with the d5, which is nice. And after d takes c4, there is an option of first attacking the pawn, uh, forcing black to make a move like, let's say, queen to a6, protecting it, and then just continuing immediately with the d5 right before black managed to blockade that pawn with the, for example, knight e7 and knight d5 maneuver, which is very important. In this case, I would say that white has a pretty annoying initiative. So now uh, let's get to the lines that uh, give black a chance to sort of prevent b4, at least for some time. Uh, so they are a5 and c4. First of all, let's talk about a5 move. So 
Yes, this indeed prevents white from playing b4, uh, but the problem behind this move is that uh, instead of developing pieces, black also moves his pawn and now weakens b5 square, which is vulnerable now and white can use it a bit later. Uh, another drawback is that black uh, spans a move, uh, not developing anything, uh, which means that uh, d4 pawn is not really hanging. So Y can now develop the bishop to the active position on d3. And there's a huge difference compared to immediate bishop d3 because now uh, White's pawn controls b4 square. So what does it mean? Uh, for example, uh, Black continues with the bishop to d7 now attacking the pawn on d4. And White can simply play bishop to c2. So it's no longer dangerous uh, because after uh, something like cd4 and cd4, you may notice that black no longer has knight of b4 move or bishop b4 check or anything. So the bishop feels really comfortable here on c2 and there is no problem for white to protect d4 pawn anymore. So white can continue with natural development like knight c3, then probably knight a4 dealing with the queen and attacking c5 square and uh, this sort of stuff. So uh, black may try to keep on uh, exerting pressure on d4 and uh, play something like knight to h6, again, uh, knight to e7, knight to h6. In many cases, just a question of taste. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you want to uh, keep an eye on pawn c5 being ready to recapture with the bishop. Um, you may ask, why not taking on h6? Well, in many cases, if you take on h6, first of all, this damage of the pawn structure is not necessarily that dramatic for black. And another uh, thing is that there is an intermediate capture on b2 attacking the rook on a1. This may be also an issue. So after knight to h6, castling, c captures d4, c captures d4, knight goes to f5, attacking the pawn on d4. At first glance, it feels like, well, white didn't solve the problem because bishop cannot go anywhere and b2 is still hanging, so what to do? How to protect the d4 pawn? Well, uh, since the bishop is on this diagonal, it's possible to capture on f5. Of course, now after e takes f5, uh, black has pair of bishops and uh, light square bishop no longer has a counterpart. But white continues with the knight to c3, attacking the pawn on d5, which became vulnerable after this exchange on f5. And uh, black's bishop is more or less forced to occupy this pathetic position on e6. Doesn't mean that uh, this position is automatically very bad for black. The position of the bishop on e6 is a good defensive position, I would say. It's a very important piece here to control uh, the light squared complex, including this weakness on d5. But it's uh, anyway quite pleasant for white to play here uh, because there is no real danger to d4 pawn anymore. Uh, white has different plans how to attack this d5. Um, a bit later, there are some interesting squares to occupy. For example, typical maneuver for this pawn structures it's like knight goes through e2 to f4, where it's much more active, still attacking d5, but now exerting pressure on this bishop and also getting closer to the king side and so on. And you should know that this structure is one of the typical uh, for uh, the advanced variation. So it's really important to understand what to do here with both sides. Uh, that's about the a5 line. Now let's get to c4 which is, in my opinion, the most interesting one. So in this position, black plays c5, c4, closing the position for a long, long time, maybe forever, you never know. And uh, the point here is that uh, after white played a3, with the pawn already on c3, white actually committed a weakening of the b3 square. Now with the help of c4, Black kind of fixes this uh, weakness on b3 and also achieves uh, something more. For example, it's now much harder for white to uh, find a good position for the light square bishop because after c4, it's no longer possible to play a simple bishop to d3 move. And to bring the bishop to that diagonal will take much more time, like bishop e2, bishop d1, bishop c2. Sometimes it's simply not possible. So position is closed, we have this typical pattern with pawn chains and I would say that uh, this is an amazing playground to learn the maneuvering and hence to train your maneuvering skills. Because everything here is about maneuvering the pieces the right way. 
So after C4, where it has to continue the development, uh, one of the typical reactions here is to put the knight on D2. Uh, it's not necessarily improving the position of the knight that much, but after knight to d2, at least b3 is covered, and c4 is under pressure. Uh, Black's normal move here is knight to a5, also overprotecting c4 and adding another piece controlling b3 square. Uh, why it's important? Well, because sometimes uh, white may sacrifice the piece on c4. For example, um, in this position, it may happen if Black accidentally place knight to e7 move, kind of also con continuing the development, but uh, it's a blunder because white can capture on c4. And after dc4 and knight takes c4, we can see that white already has two pawns for a piece attacking the queen, uh, but it's not the end because now the knight gets to d6 square. The next move, for example, after queen c7, knight jumps to d6 with check, king is forced to go away from f7 pawn, and after king d7, uh, at least try not to lose the uh, rook on h8. Uh, white takes on f7, now having three pawns for a sacrificed minor piece, attacking the rook, forcing it to g8, and continuing with some sort of attack. Uh, so, as you can see, the king is in the center, the coordination is broken, and white has these amazing pawns in the center, like c4, d5 at some point may become just fatal for black. So, that's why it's important to keep an eye on uh, that pawn right from the start and that's why, in my opinion, knight a5 is just a safe option. Because anyway, sooner or later, you're going to play this move, right? So, why not to start with this right now? After knight a5, uh, white uh, may continue with uh, different moves. I mean, the easiest is bishop to e2, just continuing with castling and uh, then gradually preparing the initiative on the king side. Uh, in this case, black may continue with the bishop to d7. And now you can see that there is uh, an interesting possibility for black to improve the bishop actually at some point. So imagine the situation that a4 square is controlled and black may play bishop to a4. So in that case, again, imagine the queen has some moves. Uh, and is just forced from d1 somewhere else, uh, well, the bishop from a4 may jump to c2 and then simply stay on this diagonal, which is way better than the initial one. So this is one of the uh, strategic points here because uh, we know that this is a problem, right? And uh, if black manages to improve uh, the French bishop, then there is simply no drawbacks in black's position whatsoever. So uh, white castles here. Black continues with the knight to e7. Uh, it's time to bring uh, the knight to action. White may play a rook to b1. Um, so the idea may be just to improve the pawn structure to play b3 or b4, uh, forcing the uh, exchange of uh, these pawns and opening the position on the queen side using the fact that black is not necessarily that good developed. And there may be uh, you know, an instinct for black to uh, try to solve that problem uh, in a tactical way, like to play knight b3 with a simple idea. If knight takes on b3, then instead of recapturing it immediately, there is something like bishop to a4 pinning the knight uh, and then taking it, something like this. Uh, so this will not work because of uh, the same problem with d6 square. So in this case, it's possible just to capture on c4. And even intermediate capture on d2 doesn't solve the problem because in that case, if you take on d2, white recaptures with the knight and the same stuff. So takes c4, knight takes, attacking the queen, knight d6, then takes f7. With the bishop on d7, it's even worse for black because king cannot go to d7. And then knight f7 will be checked and captures the rook on h8. So it's a typical blunder here. Again, knight should protect the uh, pawn on c4, which means uh, knight to b3 is not an option here. So instead, it's possible to just move the queen to c7, preparing uh, for the opening of the position on the queen side in case white plays on leg b4, because now queen will control c4 square, and also uh, preparing the interesting maneuver. So as you can see, b6 square is no longer occupied, which means it's possible to occupy it with which piece? With the knight e7. So after rook to e1, White also prepares some maneuvering because this knight should be uh, transferred somewhere else on d2. It's just uh, occupying a super passive position, just uh, uh, stopping White's dark square bishop from being developed and so on. 
So black continues with this interesting maneuver. Knight c8, knight goes to f1, knight goes to b6, and now you probably understand the point behind it. So it's about controlling a4 square. As I said before, it's vital because black wants at some point to play bishop a4, bishop c2, bishop g6. So it's an ideal case here. Uh, white continues with the bishop f4. Uh, now if um, black plays bishop a4, well, it's fine. I mean, uh, white still controls c2 square, so it's not necessarily the best option for black. And something like knight to b3 gives nothing because queen simply goes away. So what? Black achieved nothing. Okay, the pieces look uh, probably not so bad, but there is no follow-up here. So it's just enough to control the stop there for black, and uh, it's time to do something with the dark square bishop. So black may start with the h6. As you can see, since everything is blockaded on the queen side, it makes sense for black to castle exactly there, because the king will be quite safe there. So h6 is kind of preparation of some activity of the uh, king side, because uh, black may think of the attack there. It's important for white to prevent this g5, at least for now. Uh, then black may castle. And after some like queen d2 and bishop e7, we enter a very interesting position, which is playable for both sides. As I said before, um, it's an amazing stuff for, you know, uh, those who want to uh, learn how to maneuver or love maneuvering the pieces and love this type of positions. Uh, so it's very complicated, very nuanced. Definitely it deserves uh, some additional analysis. Uh, but if you will learn how to play this type of positions, you will be ready to play uh, any closed position uh, arising from any opening or opening line. I hope this video was uh, useful. That's basically it for the introduction to the advanced variation. Uh, see you next videos.